Tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun. As she puts her hand in mine, we wanna chase the night.
Hello and welcome. <clears throat> Sorry about that. To Crime and Justice. Yes, I've got uh, an early one today. In fact, I'm doing two lives today. This one and another one at my usual time at 8 p.m. Today, we had some update yesterday. My by the time I found seen the update, it was too late to go live. Um, I think it came through the day before. Anyway, we've had an update on Elijah Vu. And we're going to... I'm not sure if I've downloaded it. Uh, let's have a look. We're going to watch the press release. It's not long. It's not long at all. I'm not sure if I've got it downloaded. No, I know where I've got it. I've got it on my Facebook page. Facebook page. I know I saved it somewhere. Hope you're all having a nice day, morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Hold on, hold on. Just got to uh, get presented on the screen. Don't worry, you're not missing anything because you know how they are. They take a while to set up. They take a while. You have a 7.7 7 minutes, 45 seconds press release video. But you only get about three to four minutes. All right, my check. All right, so here we're just we just wait for them to start. But some people I don't think some people are happy about the charges. All right, my check. Right. We've got a bail hearing today, but that will be 12.45 p.m. their time. That's four to one in the afternoon their time, which is about 2 a.m. my time. Should I have to move this because I need to Okay. Yep. Yeah. sound is a bit echoey. I don't know if it's because of the room lowering or what, but it sounded a bit echoey to me. So we're going to watch this in a minute once it starts and listen to what they say. I've got written down what the charges are. But I'd like to, I might have a sleep this afternoon before going live tonight. So then I won't, I'll, I'll be up for the press release. And I think what time that will be, I'd have to Google it. What time will be in the UK? Good afternoon. Thank you for attending today's press briefing and thank you to those viewing at home. My name is Captain Andrew Rates, last name is spelled R A A T Z. I am the Public Information Officer for the True Ridge Police Department. We are here today to update you on the investigation of the tragic death of Elijah Vu. Elijah has been our top priority since he was reported missing on February 20th of this year. Since the discovery of Elijah's remains last month, law enforcement and the District Attorney's Office has worked diligently to bring those responsible for his death to justice. Today you will hear from Manitowoc County District Attorney Jacqueline LeBray First name is spelled J-A-C-A-L-Y-N. Last name is spelled L-A-B-R-E. She will relay some important information in her goal of bringing justice for Elijah. After hearing from DA Labrie, we will not be taking any questions. However, we will be provided with a packet that will contain all the information that we can share at this time. I wish I could get all that package. Good afternoon, and thank you for. My name is Jacqueline Labrie. 
and I serve as district attorney for Bonner County. Today, I'm going to update the tragic events surrounding the death of Elijah Vu. After thorough investigation by law enforcement, the Manitowoc County District Attorney's Office has issued charges in connection with the death of Elijah. Jesse Bang is being charged with physical abuse of a child, repeated acts causing death, hiding a corpse, and obstructing an officer. Katrina Bauer is being charged with chronic neglect of a child, consequences death, child neglect, and obstructing an officer. Both Jesse Vang and Katrina Bauer are presumed innocent in, until and unless proven guilty. A copy of the criminal complaint filed today will be available after this briefing, and I anticipate that a bail hearing will be tomorrow at 1245 p.m. before the court commissioner in Manitowoc County. Bail will be set at that time, as well as an initial appearance schedule. This is an incredibly tragic situation that has shaken our community. My thoughts and deepest condolences go out to Elijah's family for enduring unimaginable pain. Elijah was a young boy whose life was tragically cut short and his death has impacted not only his loved ones, but Two Rivers, the Two Rivers Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, our partners in the FBI and Department of Justice Criminal Investigation and other agencies who have worked tirelessly on this case. Our priority has always been to ensure a fair and just process, and today's announcement is a reflection of our commitment to upholding the law and seeking justice for Elijah. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the diligent work of law enforcement who has been investigating this case since the beginning. Also, the District Attorney's Office staff who have been working with law enforcement since the day Elijah disappeared. This has been a complex investigation involving meticulous review of hundreds of pages of police reports, video evidence, and other materials. The charges we have filed today reflect that diligent and thorough work. As we move forward with these proceedings, I ask the public to respect the legal process. It is essential to remember that those charged are presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. I also ask that the media and the public respect the privacy of Elijah's family as they navigate this heartbreaking time. While I will not comment further on the details of the case out of respect for the ongoing judicial process, I assure you that we remain committed to working with law enforcement to hold those responsible for his death accountable. Thank you for your time. Thank you, DA Labrie. We'd like to thank the Mantua County District Attorney's Office, our partner law enforcement agencies, the Wisconsin Department of Justice, Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, the FBI, Mantua County Sheriff's Office, as well as all the other agencies that have assisted us at the local, state, and federal level. In addition, we'd like to thank all the private volunteer groups that provided search efforts and resources, our community, our extended community across the nation for the continued support in our investigation and our goal of burning justice for Elijah. As I stated earlier, we have a packet for each of you containing the criminal complaint, related statute excerpts, as well as transcripts from today's briefing that will provide you with critical information. We'd like to thank you once again for your time this afternoon. This will conclude today's press briefing. You can step forward and grab one of your packets. Can you email the complaint as well? I can. Let's take one of these. Right. Okay, I'm just trying to close this down. So that was short. I was hoping, yeah, I was sharing it. That was short and sweet. Right, now, so the charges are Jesse Vang charges physical abuse of a child, repeated acts causing death, hiding a corpse, and, and obstructing an officer.
Hmm. I don't know how many years. I guess to watch something like uh, Wrong Lee, uh, crime, uh, crime channels that know all about the law and the sentencing to find out what those charges mean, entail. How many years for each one? You know what I mean? I think, and Katrina Barra, the mother, she's still getting chronic neglect of a child, but consequence to death. So that's going to be more than what? Two years. I think it was only two years before for that chronic child abuse, neglect. So now it's consequence of death. It's going to be a bit more. She's got child neglect and obstructing an officer. Well, I, they've, obviously, they've obviously done their, their search, their research, their into this, right? But So they obviously can't place her at the place, at the time when the body was hit. Right, we don't know if he said, look, I hit the body or what. Or she said, he hit the body. I wasn't even there when he hit the body. We don't know. But I think she should be hanged up for hiding a corpse. Because of that one message she sent to him. Oh, guys, if I can find it on YouTube. Elijah Bird. Let's see if I can find him. Mm. Oh, God, get that off there. I'm trying to find where it could be. See, W Wisconsin 12 News has got boyfriend charged and three-year-old Elijah Vu's death. But it's not murder. It's not murder. It's not even manslaughter. They've not even put it down to manslaughter. You know what I mean? It's physical abuse of a child, repeated acts causing death. So will that come under manslaughter? I don't know. Let's just see if this is wrong, everyone, where they, they say about the message that the mother sent to Jessie Van. And it's raining here in Bunny, Scotland. But, but we'll watch this anyway. Right? So let's share this. Share screen. Right, so let's have a look. See what this. I know I'm one of the court hearings. It just mentioned that I let the messages. Uh, I had an opportunity to talk with counsel earlier. Uh, Attorney Larson uh, had filed previously a motion to modify bail. And then um, I think it was late yesterday, filed a motion to dismiss count one. Uh, my understanding after talking with counsel is that uh, Attorney Labrie anticipates filing an amended complaint. And based on that, 
parties are asking to adjourn the prelim preliminary hearing uh, one week and proceed with the bail motion today. Attorney LaBrie, is that your understanding as to how we're proceeding? Yes, Judge, and I did file the amended complaint prior to coming to court today. I emailed a copy uh, to Attorney Larson and the court. And I'm Attorney Larson, that's mentioned. your understanding Files. as to how we're proceeding it's today. It's all for on it that. Is your... we'll go um, okay. So what the court is going to do then is this. As it relates to the preliminary hearing, in light of uh, the filings, I'm going to find good cause to toll any applicable time limits. I'll adjourn the preliminary hearing to March 14th at 10:30. Judge, we're yeah. going to do it at 11. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, we'll do it. We'll we'll adjourn to March 14th at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Attorney Larson. Um, that leaves us with the bail motion. Then, Attorney Labrie, did you have an opportunity to review the bail motion? Judge, I did have an opportunity to review the bail motion. All right, Attorney Larson, go ahead. Your Honor, um, we are asking that the court reduce the bond to one of a signature. I would note that um, Ms. Bauer is a resident of Wisconsin. She's a lifelong resident of Wisconsin. Um, she has no serious record. She has two prior CMs of dis disorderly conduct and two CTs. She had no misses in the two CMs, which were in, two th I believe, 2011 and 2015. Um, in 2017, she had the two CTs I referenced. All, all of these were in Ottawa County, with the exception of the first, which was in Winnebago County. In the 2017 cases, she did miss court. She missed court. Um, on June 17th, 2CT236, she missed court on June 23rd of 2017. A bench warrant was issued, but on, excuse me, on June 21st, but on June 23rd, the bench warrant was not issued. Um, in 17CT752, there were several warrants issued. There was one issued on February 5th of 2018. She was an appointed an attorney on February 7th and the warrant was canceled on February 9th. On May 16 of 2018, a bench warrant was issued. On May 23rd, bond was reinstated. On August 14, a bench warrant was issued and on November 15, bond was reinstated. Again, that was in Ottawa County. No cash was ever ordered. Um, Ms. Bauer did suffer a significant brain injury in 2015. I do not know if that contributed, but that would be my guess. She has um, some difficulty regarding dates and things of that nature. She did have a neuro assessment done. I do not yet have that, but she is receiving SSDI for that condition. As I stated, she's a resident of Wisconsin. She will not leave the state of Wisconsin. She doesn't have anywhere to go outside of Wisconsin. Um, obviously, the but she did have somewhere to go. She had Jesse Vang's network of family and friends to help her get out that state. She would have run. She would have been running. And it would have took him a long time to find her. This is a very, very high profile case. There's a, a, a lot of um, high emotion going on, but there's also high emotion going on with Ms. Bauer. She's been worried sick, not knowing where her son is. Um, she had been planning on moving back to Two Rivers since the Wisconsin Dells is quite expensive. Uh, I don't know what her immediate plan will be, but I would propose that she will attend court hearings with me. She has transportation. She does have the ability to also appear um, at non-evidentiary hearings by Zoom. I further assert she's not a danger to the community. Um, for those reasons, Judge, we are asking that the court amend the bond to one of the signature. Attorney LaBrie. Your Honor, the state is opposed to any modification in bail as Attorney Larson indicated the defendant in 2000. 
multiple failures of your court um, in Outagamie County in 17 CT 752. She also had that failure to appear in 17 CT 236, as well as the two dis prior just or like conduct cases. As a record out of Wisconsin, um, we don't have any conviction for her, but she does contacts with law enforcement in 2014 in the state of Nevada, one in March of 2014 and one in April. Again, those weren't convictions, but it does show that she has had contacts outside of the state of Wisconsin. The state feels that the cash bond at this point um, is appropriate. In fact, in light of the amended complaint, I would say it may even be low. We have now changed count one to chronic neglect as party to the crime. We have also added the count four, which involves neglect to another child who is six years old from February 14th. So now she's facing additional charges with much higher penalties. Um, these cases obviously involve uh, the care of some very young children. One of the children is around the age of three, the other is around the age of six. And not only were we dealing with the defendant sending the child to uh, to Rivers for discipline or the boot camp, as they described it, to make that child fearful of the co-actor so that when the child returns to her residence, he would behave better. Um, there is also evidence that on February 14th, she left the six-year-old unattended in a vehicle for approximately an hour in cold weather. Um, the temperature around that time was around probably 27 to 30 degrees with the vehicle turned off. Then we have also as part of count one, the chronic neglect on February 16th, leaving the three-year-old unattended for at least an hour as her and the other co-actor are traveling to locations in the city of Manitowoc and neither one of them are seen with the child. Um, it's clear that this defendant is facing some serious charges and there is grave concern. Um, she knows she's facing potential imprisonment, which is an incentive to flee. Uh, she also was encouraging the co-actor not to cooperate with law enforcement on February 20th. Um, she was messaging the co-actor to not say too much. Um, don't, don't let them or no, don't talk. <coughs> Uh, ask for an attorney, those types of things. I think at this point, it's clear that cash is warranted. I would ask that the cash either remain the same or be increased. I don't think a signature bond at all is appropriate based upon the totality of the facts, the new charges, um, and her past record. Judge, I do know there is one victim who wanted to make a statement regarding bail. I don't know um, when the court would like to hear that. Right now. Okay. If you're done. Yeah. I'm done with my argument, Judge. Sure. Um, the victim wanted me to read their statement because of concern of reading in front of a courtroom. That's fine. Um, just uh, we'll need the name of the person who you're reading the statement on uh, behalf of. If so, if you could give me the name and spell the last name. Okay. The name is Jody. J. It's blanked out for. And the statement is, I have known Katrina Bauer longer than anyone else as I am her mother. At this time, I am asking the court to deny any bond modification for a multitude of reasons. I understand bond is not meant to be a punishment, but as an assurance to appear. While you have access to some of Katrina's records, there are records in other states, including Nevada and California, you are not seeing. She has contacts in other states that may be willing to assist her depending on the story she is telling. Her story always depends on her audience. At this time, rather than aligning in locating her son, she feels the need to reiterate what a good guy Jesse is and is fully defending him and his actions. By aligning with him, she could potentially have access to his extended family and ability to flee the area. Katrina routinely will blame anyone and everyone for what happens without taking responsibility for her actions. 
It goes without saying she is incapable of making appropriate judgments in everyday life, which is likely being available for future court dates and questioning. Katrina has no ties to the community. When I asked her why she would go back to Jesse, she stated, I felt alone. I can assure you she is well aware of resources available, but she cho chose not to use them. She severed her relationship with me in October of 2022, so there is no family in the area. While paper will show minimal income, there's unaccounted for income when compared to her spending. I am aware she allowed Jesse to claim her children as dependents on his taxes, and he gave her half the refund they received. I am also aware she receives food stamps for a child not in her care and has miscellaneous unclaimed income. In 2016, while she, why we resided in California and my oldest daughter was having heart surgery in Wisconsin, so I was here with her. At that time, Katrina faked a forced abduction and had missing person reports filed in California. She was located in Minnesota where she was taken a hold for erratic behavior and drug use. Officers offered to drive her to Wisconsin and she refused to leave, stating she was there by her own free will. Katrina has struggled with depression and anxiety for many years, um, has a history of erratic behavior. She has been suffering from traumatic brain injury and is highly likely to forget mandatory appearances. I don't feel it's worth the risk to lower her bond, especially as victim has not been found and many questions are unanswered. She does not, she does need to be held accountable for what rules out in the future. And I feel releasing her, she would be a flight risk. I have been the victim on her verbal and emotional abuse for a very long time. If the court finds any reason to reduce her bail, I would like to be assured of my peace and safety with a court ordered no contact and GPS monitoring. Great. So uh, the court's primary consideration in uh, determining uh, bail is assuring the defense appearance in court. Um, uh, quite frankly, I haven't seen uh, the amended complaint yet. I don't necessarily know that I need to. Um, there's enough in the complaint uh, that I feel in combination with her current circumstances that bail uh, is set right about where it needs to be. Um, and of primary concern to the court is that uh, based on the allegations in the original complaint, um, you know, her son was missing and she was not being truthful with law enforcement about whether or not she was in the area. That in combination with the fact that she, That's at true. least uh, for now, uh, has an address in Wisconsin Dells. Um, I know Attorney Larson makes reference to the fact that, you know, it's the state of Wisconsin and uh, she may have residents an opportunity to reside in Two Rivers. Um, it's certainly going to take more than uh, opportunity in the, uh, the borders of the state uh, to make the court uh, feel assured that she would appear. Um, the behavior that's outlined in the complaint in terms of not being honest with law enforcement as far as her presence goes gives me an, an incredible amount of concern about uh, whether or not she would, in fact, uh, make herself available for future court appearances. So for those reasons, the court will deny the motion to modify bail. I'll ask Attorney Labrie to draft an order to that effect. Um, Attorney Larson, just as a follow-up to the motion, though, in the event... Uh, uh, she has some uh, definite place uh, to reside um, locally uh, that uh, might accommodate a daily check-in that I'm not saying it would carry the day, but it's certainly something the court would consider. And um, uh, just for the sake of your discussions with your client, okay? Thank you. All right. Anything else for the record on this case, Attorney Labrie? Not on this case, Judge. Uh, Attorney Larson? No, Your Honor, thank you. Before we adjourn, then I just want to let uh, uh, the folks generally assembled uh, know I've talked with the district attorney about this so that they can communicate it to the family. I typically don't allow people to wear um, shirts uh, for uh, missing people or alleged victims in the courtroom, uh, especially once we get to the point where 
Uh, Ms. Bowers uh, or Mr. Vang is going to be in person. I have no problem uh, with the fact that people have them. Um, I understand why. And I got no problem if people want to cover them up with a jacket, but I typically don't allow uh, those to be worn um, or exposed in the courtroom. It's not the kind of thing I was going to make a big deal about today and have people removed, but I'll let you know going forward, you show up wearing the shirt, um, you'll be shown the door. So, uh, and it's not, it, it's not for any reason other than I'm trying to maintain the temperature uh, in the courtroom here and not have people get too excited. So with that, we'll be adjourned on this case. Uh, James, who's next? Right, let's stop it there because he comes up, but he's only up for a minute or so because I don't believe he's got a lawyer and an attorney at the time here. I'm not sure if he had an attorney, right? But I'll be posting all the documents that I've got on this case onto my Discord page. That's where I post all my documents. So if you want to... Because when you click on the link, it'll automatically download onto your laptop. So you can download it. You can keep it then. It is completely yours. So I will be doing that this afternoon. Uploading them onto my Discord page. And I'll put it on um, a separate thread. So it'll be in the Elijah Vu thread. Okay. And what else was there? There's some else I know. But that was the one I was, I was, I'm glad I got that one because that was the one I wanted where it told you about how she was telling Jesse Van not to talk to the law enforcement, to get an attorney, to do this. To... She was telling him. And yet she said to the police that he was the enforcer. And I'll put the documents on there. I can, I'm not sure if I've got the documents on my laptop or if it's on my USB. Uh, is this, you know, that's a mental criminal complaint for? Oh, God. Um, did you, yeah. No, I think I may have put them onto my USB. I could pull it up off my USB, but I can't be bothered to because I'd have to unplug my mic to push, put in my extension, USB extension thing so that I can get more than one thing coming off it. Anyway, I'll put all the documents I have on this case on my school. The link will be in the description. Now, there was some else I wanted to see. Right. Let's just watch this, watch this one here. Right. Yeah, uh, I found out the time for the bail hearing in the UK time is 18.45pm. I was way off the time, wasn't I? So, 12.45pm, their time Man in Manitoba County. And 18.45 p.m. my time. I've just got to find out which channel will be airing. Because I know there is a channel that airs. I think it's W by TV. I think they do all that. Or, or Wisconsin News. All right, but we'll have a look at this one. Right, this is the 15 hours ago. Oh, um. Oh, 
It's just 15. Breaking news as we come on the air at five. Criminal charges now filed in the death and disappearance of this missing little boy in Manawatt County. Elijah Vu vanished in February from Two Rivers. Hunters discovered his remains last month in a wooded area not too far from where he disappeared. Prosecutors now say Vu's mother, Katrina Bauer, and her boyfriend, Jesse Vang, caused his death by neglect and child abuse. 12 News' Nick Bohr is live at the Two Rivers Police Department tonight. Nick, this case continues to rock the community there. All right, the community really came out to support the extended family. Two Rivers Police uh, vowing not to give up as the mystery of Elijah's disappearance dragged on for months. Now what many suspected, criminal charges filed against his mom and her boyfriend, who claimed all along not to have known what happened to him. Searchers by the scores turned out in February when they learned three-year-old Elijah Vu was missing, supposedly wandering off from a Two Rivers apartment where he was staying. Those searches lasted for weeks, and finally in September, the grisly discovery of his skull and bones in the woods near a Manitowoc County home familiar to his family. Testing confirmed it was Elijah. Our priority has always been to ensure a fair and just process and today's announcement is a reflection of our commitment to upholding the law and seeking justice for Elijah. The district attorney here announcing this afternoon child neglect causing death charges against Elijah's mom, Katrina Bauer, and physical abuse of a child causing death charges against her boyfriend, Jesse Vang. According to the criminal complaint, the pair admitted Elijah was staying with Vang so he could be disciplined. But prosecutors say it was torture, including, quote, forced position holding, exposure to cold water showers, sleep deprivation, isolation, and terrorizing. Elijah was a young boy whose life was tragically cut short. According to the complaint, the autopsy lists his cause of death as, quote, homicide by unspecified means. But it showed he had a healing skull fracture. And photos found on Vang and Bauer's phones showed the boy with bruises consistent with abuse. This is an incredibly tragic situation that has shaken our community. The complaint reveals another key piece of evidence against Vang. Video showed him drop off a suitcase at a charity the night before Elijah was reported missing. Police recovered that suitcase and found Elijah's DNA inside of it. Nick, just heartbreaking listening to those details. What is next for this case? Well, they are both expected to be in court in Manitowoc tomorrow. They were already in custody throughout this, charged with extensive child neglect charges in the case. And now they're charged with causing his death, of course. Their bails are expected to be raised substantially. And that little boy, just three years old, uh, Nick Bohr reporting live in Two Rivers tonight. And authorities first issued an Amber Alert for Elijah Vu on February 20th. Nearly a week later, prosecutors charged his mother and her boyfriend with neglect. Searchers spent weeks canvassing the Two Rivers area looking for any sign of the child. On August 25th, community members held a celebration on what would have been his fourth birthday. Last month, a hunter discovered human remains on a private property in Two Rivers. Authorities were able to positively identify them as Elijah Vu. Right, so that's it so far. All right, and I can... Yeah, Court TV. But I think it'll be WKOW 27 News or that will cover the case, the bail hearing. They're not going to get a bail. They're not going to. They haven't had it before, so they're definitely not going to get it now, now that the body's been found. And that apparently there's signs of a healing skull fracture. That means he was either hit with something or he fell and hit his head. And then they've got video of Jesse dropping off a suitcase at some charity store. They recovered that suitcase and it had Je uh, Eliza Booth's DNA in it or on it. Right? Now that might have been how they. Now, if that was the day before he was 
uh, reported missing, which would have been reported missing on the 20th. So that would have been the 19th. If that was the day before, on the 19th, he took that suitcase to that shelter thing, right? That means they got rid of his body before the 19th. Which I said, I said, I don't think it was, it was possibly the 19th, I said, they got rid of his body. Because I've had they had that car for so many hours. <clears throat> right, so, but if he was at a charity store with, a, with the uh, suitcase with Elijah Vu's DNA in it, or on it, then that meant Elijah Vu was remo removed from the house in that suitcase and placed where his body was eventually found before the 19th. Or even on the 19th, perhaps they did it on the 19th and then got rid of the suitcase by taking to the charity store. Why are, why are people like this so fucking thick? I swear to God, I could, I wouldn't. Don't take this seriously. I could commit a murder, I think. Why? No, I couldn't commit a murder because it would be really very hard for me to commit a murder and get away with it because you are on CCTV everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you're on CCTV. Right? You're on C if you're driving a car and you're at traffic stop lights. Some traffic lights have CCTV on. If you go past uh, businesses, some, a lot of businesses nowadays have CCTV. Christ, even churches have CCTV on them. You know what I mean? Especially in the USA. Not so much in the UK. I can see it happening in the UK soon. But churches will have CCTV on. Right? But you are on camera wherever you go. If you drive past a house, they could catch your car going past it on a, a ring doorbell or even on their, home, their own home security camera. You know what I mean? They can catch your car going past there and coming back again. So how do people believe they're going to get away with unaliving and getting rid of a little body, a little boy's body? How do they think that? There are some cases where children are never found again, and I'd like to know how they get away with that, how they're not caught on CCTV. You know what I mean? There's one case now we're looking at, which I'll be talking about again tonight, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. He's not been caught on CTV, CCTV anywhere, not even leaving his house. So that says a lot. The fact that he wasn't caught on CCTV leaving his house on any ring doorbell says a lot. Even the police have said that there is no evidence to state to show that Sebastian left that house. But round where they lived, there's lots of cameras everywhere on houses, on businesses, on traffic lights. They got caught through their own stupidity. And I'm glad. But I really, th I'd like to know what this physical abuse of a child repeated acts causing death will actually fall under, will it come under manslaughter it's not going to be murder, even though I'd like it to be. He's evil. Just look at him. I don't know if you can... Is it on your screen? Yeah. Just look at him there. Evil. Evil, evil. 
Right, so I will be back on again at 18.45. That's 12.45 p.m. Manic Toronto County Time. So quarter to seven tonight, I'll be back. Well, I'll be back on at 6.30. Right, I'll set it so that it will go out so people can join me if they wish to see if i don't think it'd be a long hearing they never are they never are long hearings but you never know so let's see what they've got to say at quarter to 17 odds so until then hang on let's just remove that until then, I'd just like, this was only a short one, but I'd like to say thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my videos. If you like what you see and hear, please give this video a like. I know you can subscribe, which is totally free, but if you really like what you hear and see, then please, you can now become a member with all the little perks. At quite a low low price compared to some YouTubers, but I'm not here for the money. I am here for the children and for the victims, not just children, adults as well. For the victims, right? My main priority is children, but I also cover adult cases, missing cases, um, SA and cases against adults. Like the one with Sean Diggy Coombs. So I'll cover those cases as well. Because that's a crime. And they need to be dealt with. They need to be got off the face of our earth. Locked up and buried under the flipping jail. Anyway. I would say thank you for being here again. And I will see you all again at... What time? I can't think now. Quarter to seven. It's now 6 30, sorry, 6 30 pm tonight. I'll be back on again. And then I'll be back on again at 8 pm. So the one at 6 30 won't be a long one. It'll only be about half an hour, 45 minutes. And then it'll give me a chance just to grab a coffee and wear it before I start again at 8 o'clock. All right. So. Just trying to find the song I like. There it is. So, until then, take care and stay safe. Thank you all. So, I'm just trying to find my song again now. Let me see my way right. Two arms We rise like so building. Thank you all again. Please hit the like button. Doesn't cost you anything. Hit the subscribe button and hit the all bell. That way you'll get notified of all my videos that I put out. And every time I go live. So thank you again. Really do appreciate everyone for watching my videos. Take care.